One turn can unlock your entire game. In this video, I'm going to be explaining why you turn slowly and everybody knows it. And that's okay, because we want to see sharper turns. And there's a few things you can do to make that happen. So let's get into it. When the ball is played to you, how quickly can you get it under your frame, but flip your frame to engage the game and take your team up the field? Take that space. Well, this is going to be the make or break on whether or not you are playing fast and if you're playing effective and if you are a good player on the field. Now, of course, you can be the best player on the field with ball control and with skills and with shooting, but if your back is always to the goal or if your back is always to the defender, then you're not very good. And I'm just saying that. I'm not the only one who thinks it. I might be the only one saying it. I might be the first person that said it to you, but that's the truth. How quickly you can flip your hips, get around the ball, and engage the game is going to show how good of a player you are. Now there's a few things you can do to make sure that you are doing this effectively. First, number one, check your shoulders. Yes, check them. What's back, what's back there? Check them, check them regularly. And there are certain times that you need to be checking. Now, there is a difference between checking your shoulders and scanning the field. Okay, scanning the field is something that we're always doing to make sure that we're aware of the game around us. So that way, whenever I'm piecing together what I'm seeing out of my peripherals, I wanna make sure that I'm constantly scanning to see what my teammates are doing and what who's marking those teammates if someone's open. Now, one thing you wanna look for is always checking to see if we have any empty channels. Because if we have any empty channels, an area of the field that's open where I have somebody just out there standing, completely alone, then I want to then make sure that I get the ball and I find that person in the empty channel. I want to hit them as soon as possible. But checking my shoulders is a little different. So whenever the ball is being played to me, if I'm about to go check in to go try to receive that pass from a player, show for my teammate, I am going to check my shoulders. Once for sure, if not twice. Whenever I check, I want to make sure that there's no one around me. I'm looking for pockets of space all over the field. Now, as soon as I go to check in and as soon as I go to help that player, well, a defender may notice that I'm going in and they want to try to get on my back as soon as possible. The defender's job is to make sure that I don't turn. That'll make their life a hundred times easier if they just make sure that I don't turn. So I have to make sure that I know what's happening behind me. Now, if I notice that the defender has decided to try to stop me from going a certain way, well, then it might be mindful of me to try to have my first touch into the space that's open unless we really want to get the ball into that area where it's now my job to receive the ball, sharp, fast turn, don't let them take that angle away from me, and then beat them 1v1. Now, ways that I really like to use to beat these defenders who are checking in are body feints. Body feints are outstanding. We should never let the defender stop us from going where we wanna go. You can always use a body feint. It is so effective, it is so creative and it never lets the defender touch us. So the only reason why you do skill moves is to move the defender. That is extremely important to know. Number two, flipping your frame. How effectively can I get my frame around the ball, okay? So of course, as we've talked about, this is going to come back down to breaking down your basics, your core, your knees, and your toes. How well are you playing from those diagnostics? But now whenever I'm turning, Watch any dancer in the world, what happens whenever they go to make a sharp turn? Well, they bring their arms closer to their body. So if you're trying to turn, but you're way out here, my arms are wide and I'm trying to do this long turn, or same with your legs. If your legs are out wide and you're trying to do this long turn, it's not going to work. We have to bring our arms closer into our body so that way once I make that sharp turn and I'm driving forward, I have to get that shoulder back across my body so I can flip quickly and turn into the play, moving up the field and getting sharp on the ball. Now we wanna make sure that uh, we have that muscle memory and that muscle coordination firing between our hip and our shoulder. Now we do that through our arms. So whichever side that you want to try to turn to, you actually wanna use the arm on that side. And the reason why is because your arm 
in your sprint mechanic is connected to your other leg. So if I want to turn this way, then I need to throw that arm the other way because I need to flip my hip as fast as I can. The only way to flip your hip that fast is by getting this arm across your body and flipping that hip and driving that knee. That's the same running mechanic as if I'm moving forward because I'm driving that knee up, but I have to now flip it across my body and flip that hip over while controlling that touch that I have with my foot on the ball. Now, we wanna make sure that again, everything is tight to our body. We wanna keep our limbs close to our body and flip that frame over and make sure that we're driving that shoulder into the space, that turn that we're trying to get into. It's going to feel unique, but I think you have the ability to pull it off. Number three is taking three controlled touches. Now, as soon as we flip our hip and we get back on top of the ball, we're getting our frame on top of the ball as soon as possible, as quickly as we can, and we're driving forward with the ball. Now, I like taking three controlled touches because you automatically know that you are in control of the ball. Now, of course, if you already saw and you scanned and you looked, and then you checked your shoulder and saw that there was no one there, by the time that I turn, I'm already off to the races. If there's no one there, you need to be taking as much space as possible. Start driving forward, get your team into dangerous areas, make the play lethal as quickly as possible. And then from there, if a player is stepping to you to try to slow you down, well, you already have the momentum on your side. The player's already moving towards you. So all you need to do is pick a side, sell them on that side, and then go the other way. It, it can literally be that easy. If you don't slow down and you do that within um, eight to six feet of the player, we always wanna stay out of that player's radius because whenever I'm moving towards a player, the only thing that's going to stop me is if I let myself get too close to them and then they can either grab onto me or they can stick out a leg and take the ball away from me or foul me, which, is honestly not something that we should even let them do. You can you can sell them on a way by giving all of your moments in one way and then cut out well before you even get to them. At least six to four feet before them should be when your cut takes place and then you're gone. You're, you're well past them, you play them on a one-two or you just get into space, make it lethal yourself and take a shot. So these are the three simple ways that I believe that any player can start to turn faster to speed up their game. And I honestly believe that any player on the field is one turn away from unlocking their game. And if you can do this, if you can practice this effectively, if you can actually start turning quickly, getting the ball on your foot as fast as possible, then you are going to unlock a whole new level to your game. You're going to be playing with extreme pace, with real venom and you're going to make things very lethal for your team. Your teammates are going to be excited to see this new you. So definitely give your all to training in this way. Try to focus on this continuously. This has to be something that you work on every single day in practice and that you hold yourself to because this is going to be a new style of play for most of you. Most of the people that I coach or most of the players that I see, even on my own team, don't turn as fast as we'd like them to or that I'd like them to. I wanna see the, the fastest turn. As soon as the ball gets to them, they have it on their foot, they're, they're sharp, they're gone. Sharp, they're gone. Sharp, they're gone. I wanna see this over and over and over again because once you start playing from this pace, the, the other team doesn't know what to do. The other team are always concerned with the person who has the ball and who can do this. It's whenever your turns are slow or you're not checking your shoulders and you're just letting the defense do whatever they want. They're always on your back. They're always taking the ball off you. You're never actually getting the ball, flipping and finding your teammates. That That's whenever the, the play breaks down. That's whenever we can't do what it is that we want to do. Our attack isn't lethal. Our, our game, we're now just hoping and praying for a counter attack. We're hoping and praying that we can send a long ball over the defense. We literally have to play it over the midfield just to get a chance on goal, and that's unacceptable in my opinion. And honestly, I think every coach's opinion. If you're if you're the type of player who isn't able to give the coach this sharp turn and making the play extremely dangerous very fast, then you're just not gonna see the field. And I say that because as you go up in level of competitive and uh, even in school, right? Whenever we are trying out for a high school team or you're trying out for some other age group on a team, you are going to have so many people trying out that you have to stand out above the rest. And what is it that's going to make you stand out above all of these other people who are showing up and who want your spot, who want it? 
you see it as your spot, but there's only one position on the field. There's only one, there's only one person that gets to play that. And so this is how you make yourself stand out. It's in these small areas within your game where if you can make it clockwork and you can over and over and over again, it's so smooth, it's so seemingly effortless, but it's because you have built this into your game from the ground up. And this is how we establish how you play. You check your shoulders, you scan the field, you get the ball on your foot, you flip your hips extremely fast by, by engaging and flipping through, getting around, and now we are off to the races. You get three controlled touches on the ball, you make a break, you cut from one side to the other at least eight to six feet in front of the defender, showing them one way, taking the other. You're always just running past people with extreme pace. You can't be stopped on the field. This is how we play. This is how one turn can unlock your entire game. I hope you found this helpful and I am excited to see how you implement this and add this into your game. I know that it is really going to do wonders. So this is Coach Connor and I'm all in and dedicated in your development in soccer. Bye for now.